Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Toxigenation. In today's episode, we are going to go through the step-by-step -step process of applying your work permit. Most students come to Canada on a study permit and when you finish your degree, that study permit is automatically void. So you're not a student anymore and so you need to apply for your work permit if you wish to continue working full-time in Canada. If you do a degree, ideally you get a three-year work permit or if you do a diploma, which is like a year long, you usually get a one year's work permit or two years, but like a three year or four year degree course is going to give you a three year work permit. So for three years, you can stay in Canada and continue working. And in that time, if you wish to settle down in Canada as well, you can also apply your PR. Many of you know I came to Canada four years ago and now I've completed my degree in computer science and mathematics. And now I've applied my work permit as well. So there's also a question of whether you can work part-time or full-time after you've completed your degree without applying your work permit. So when you've not applied your work permit and your study permit is void technically because you've completed your uh, study, you can work up to 20 hours. Even though it says on the website that you can work full-time on a scheduled break, you can only work full-time on a scheduled break when the following semester you are still a student. But if you are not a student the following semester, then you can only work up to 20 hours before applying your work permit. As soon as you apply your work permit, you will get a letter of submission, uh, either the same day or the day after. You can take that letter of submission and submit it to your employer. They can then transition you into a full-time employee. This is mostly beneficial for those who already have a job prior to graduating. If you if you are in computer science and you get a work term somewhere, and at the end of your work term, if they keep you on, on part-time, so you can work for that company part-time while completing your studies and when you've done your studies, if they have a full-time offer letter for you, that is fantastic. So you don't waste any time at all. You can straight away apply your work permit and get that letter of submission and give it to them. So you can start working full-time without wasting, you know, one month, two months, three months, whatever time it takes to find another job. This is the best case scenario. And that's what happened in my case. I've started full-time as well. I've applied my work permit. I took the letter of submission and I gave it. Uh, to my employer. Even before I receive approval for the work permit, I can still work full time. I will divide this video into two parts. One will be the list of documents you need uh, to gather before you apply a work permit and two will be the form itself, how you fill out the form and stuff. The first document that you will need is going to be a university transcript. If you are doing a program at MUN, you can get that through your MUN self-service account. Uh, you can also request for an official transcript over there. That is around $15 right now. It was 10 when I started, but now it's $15. And uh, for every second transcript you request, it's going to be an additional $2 charge. So if you were to request two transcript, you will pay $17. Number two, you will need a proper digital photo taken, a headshot. This cannot be with you, you know, uh, sipping water or coffee in a Starbucks or something. It has to be a proper professional uh, headshot taken. You will need that as well. It should be in color copy. I will leave a link in the description for the requirements of the photo. Number three, a color copy of your passport front and back pages. You will need this also in several other places. So what I did when I first came here, I used the app Cam Scanner and I've scanned my passport in it. It gives a very magical view of your scan. It's as if like you're using it in a machine. So if you're familiar with Cam Scanner, then you can go ahead and use that. And if you're not, I highly recommend you scan it with the app and you can download a PDF copy on your, or copy on your cell phone and uh, save it on your computer. So every time you need uh, to use passport anywhere, you can just, you know, go to that folder and download it or submit it wherever you need it. It's very easy. And that prevents you from or getting your passport from your bag every time scanning it taking a picture and you know there is risk every time you handle your passport there's a risk of losing it so I like to keep my passport in one place and I never touch it unless I ha absolutely have to the last piece of document that you will need is going to be a letter from your university that states you have completed your program of study this letter is oft often issued out uh, mid first month the following semester so if you've graduated in December you will get it mid January and uh, you also have to fill out a form for that now there are two kinds of letters that are issued one is the official letter that states for your eligibility for graduation that letter may may not be uh, usable I some people say that it can be used some say it cannot be used but what certainly can be used is your PGWP letter postgraduate work permit letter there's a form that you have to fill out for that it's I think $15 as well and you submit that form to uh, the university they will send you a PGWP letter 
that certainly you can use for your work permit application. Okay, fantastic. The documents are out of the way. Let's see how to fill out the application itself. To begin your work permit application, you will search IRCC login and we will see this kind of a link here sign into your IRCC secure account. We will click that and this kind of a front end view will be displayed. You can sign in with your GC key if you already have it. If you've been here for long enough, you would have this key. If you don't have it, that's okay. You can register for a new account. Or if you uh, if you have been using this GC key, but someone else has been applying it on your behalf, say, for example, your agent, you can request them the credentials. And if you can get it, uh, then that's great. Uh, since I have mine, we will go ahead and sign in with our GC key. We will sign in here. Continue. See, these are my applications that I have submitted. We will come down here apply to come to canada even though if you're already in canada you're not applying to come to canada all of the applications come under this category so we will select this apply to come to canada it's asking us for a personal reference code over here now if you don't have this that's fine i do not have a personal reference code so we will select visitor visa study and or slash or work permit so what would you like to do in canada since you are going to be working, you will select work. How long are you planning to stay in Canada? Temporary less than six months, but because we want for a three year work permit or two years or whatever is your situation, you can select that uh, temporarily more than six months. Select the code that matches the one on your passport. Okay. What is your current territory country of residence? If you are presently in Canada, you should select Canada. So since we are in Canada, we will select Canada. Do you have a family member who is a Canadian citizen or permanent resident and is 18 years or older? Nope. What is the date of birth? You guys can enter your date of birth. Are you a lawful permanent resident of the United States with a valid US citizenship and immigration services number? Nope. What is the current immigration status in, uh, in Canada? So at this point you are going to be a student because You've not finished your uh, you finished your degree, but you will still be a student because you have a valid study permit. Do you plan to work on campus? No. Are you a full time student at a participating post secondary institution and want to work off campus up to twenty hours a week? Nope. Have you recently graduated from a participating Canadian post secondary institution for which your program? Your study program was a full time and a minimum of eight months. This would be yes, because we have graduated from a Canadian post secondary institution and our program was more than eight months. Is your work an essential part of your studies? This is if you were applying for your co op work permit, you would say yes, but since we've already graduated, we will select here no. Have you been told by an Immigration Refugee Citizenship Canada office that you are approved in principle for permanent residence in Canada? No. Have you submitted a permanent resident application in Canada? No. If you have, if you, then you can, you can go ahead and select yes. Do you have a written job offer? Now, in my case, I, it was yes. But uh, if you don't have, you can select no. And we'll go right now with no, given that that's, that's the situation for most people. Do you have an official letter from your school that confirms you've completed your study program as well as a copy of your final transfer? Yes. What is your marital status? If you were married, if you're divorced, legally separated, whatever it is, you can enter here. What is your province of destination? If multiple provinces, select one in which you will be spending most of your time. So our one is in Newfoundland and Labrador. This is where we are. Um, this is where I am. So I will select Newfoundland and Labrador. So it is asking us what kind of visa do we want to apply? Uh, temporary resident visa or postgraduate work permit? Uh, in Canada this is what we want to select now it says you're almost done okay we go ahead and continue do you have an official letter from school that says you've completed your program so we would select yes again have you had a medical exam performed by an IRCC authorized panel within the last 12 months we will say no have you lived in designated country or territory for more than six months in the last year so it's asking us if we want to work in the f in one of the following jobs but because we want an open work permit i'm going to select no here do you want to su submit an application for a ma family member 
no so you're giving someone else access to your application no in the past 10 years have you given your fingerprints and photo for an application to come to Canada yes now I did this that's why I've selected yes if you've not given your fingerprints uh, or photo then you will select no but uh, the rules have changed if you've applied your visa then you would most likely uh, have to give your fingerprints in your home country itself so I am pretty sure most likely it's going to be yes but again your situation will depend upon uh, your own circumstances there are fees associated with this application will you be paying your own fees or are you exempt yes I will be paying my application fees but if you know that you are not you are exempt for any reason then you can go ahead and select that by the way the cost for this uh, form is going to be $255 are you able to make a digital copy of your documents with a scanner yes will you be paying your fees online to pay online you use credit card or these other cards that are here yes and then you can go ahead and review your answers based on these answers they will give you a form to fill out right now so this is just saying uh, you must be logged into your own account to submit an application you cannot use another person's account save your application when you exit upload your documents uh, th these are the formats for pictures and stuff PDF JPEG doc and then pay your fees go ahead and continue so now they've given us our, our document checklist this is the application form they have given us to fill out and you will need recent education transcript you will need a completion of studies letter which we've gone through you will need a passport color copy and your digital photo when you click this to download it you will receive this kind of a view and that's totally normal you will need to download this onto your computer and open this with Adobe application so if we will show this in finder here we will need to open this with Adobe Acrobat Reader this is how it looks when it is open in Adobe you will need to fill out this form and we will do that right now so UCI is going to be the number that is on your study permit uh, you will find the UCI there and you put it here I want to, I want service in English or French we'll select English whatever is your number you can enter it I am applying for one or more of the following apply for a work permit with the same employer apply for a work permit for the first time with the new employer get a temporary resident permit restore my status as a worker so this is most relevant to us we will select this we'll enter our full name here given names as shown on your passport or travel document this these are pretty much the basic information your uh, sex date of birth place of town place of birth country or territory citizenship all of this you will enter country current country or territory residence so this will be Canada and this is what is your status here a student from which date to which date so this is from the first time you've come to Canada up until uh, whatever is the validity of a study permit previous country or territories of residence during the past five years have you lived in any country or territory other than your country of citizenship so if you say yes then you will need to provide those details uh, but if you've not lived any in, in any other country other than your home hometown or uh, home country then you will select no here your current marital status these are pretty basic informations your personal details have you been married or in a common law relationship no your languages whatever you're familiar with your passport information you will put over here your national identity document if you've got a driving license or this is in Canada of course if you've got a driving license in Canada or identity card number here then you can enter these information here if you are a permanent resident in the United States you will uh, you will either say yes or no for most of most of you it's going to be no so this is your current mailing address if you put in uh, the address here and then move out of that house the document will arrive on this particular house on the mailbox of this particular house so you need to stay at that place until unless at least you receive a work permit that's very important uh, if you're not sure that you may be moving out then you want to put an address here 
say your mom's address or your dad's address or an uncle and aunt's address who is in Canada so they will get the document and you know it is safe with them then you will enter your current residential address where you are living if it's the same as the mailing address then just say yes your telephone your fax number if you have any your email address up there coming into Canada date and place of your original entry to Canada so this is going to be when you first entered Canada and where was it so I entered uh, in 2017 December and it was in Toronto Airport and the purpose for coming to Canada was a student so study you will select study here date and place of your most recent entry to Canada if you've gone back home and then come back to Canada again you will enter that here as well what type of work permit are you applying for you want to select open work permit so open work permit this is what you will select or you can also select for PGWB post graduation work permit either one is fine if you have received a job offer then you will enter these details if you have not received a job offer then you will not enter these details here education from what level of study you will enter your bachelor's education here which city town country ter or territory you will enter your employment whatever jobs you've done in your time of stay in Canada from and to uh, you'll have three blocks here to if you've changed more than three jobs then you will put out a separate letter and state all of the jobs you have and uh, state also from what date to what date you have worked in those jobs and then you will upload that letter as well as an additional document your background information within the past two years have you or a family member had a tuberculosis or lungs uh, of the lungs or been in close contact with other person who has tuberculosis yes or no ideally it should be no do you have any physical or mental disorder no so these are pretty basic questions here the background information here as well and then when you've done all of that you'll put the date and you will sign this application with your name and every time you finish don't forget to validate when you validate information gets saved then you close this document and you upload it back over here once you've uploaded everything you go ahead and you pay the fees your fees would be $255 you go ahead and pay the fees for your work permit that is it for your work permit application. Hurrah! That's it for this episode, guys. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing. Give this video a huge thumbs up and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to share this with your friends who may also be able to find this valuable. And I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.